Suno Studio V1.1 has just been released. This video is going to turn your confusion into understanding. This video is for beginners who are confused. This video is not for the tax man. So if you're watching this tax man, get out of here. So the first step in dismantling your confusion is going to be learning about the interface because I've noticed with my students this is the main thing they first have a problem with and it confused me too for a little bit because Suno really doesn't give you information about it it's not very intuitive the first thing is this layout button so hitting this layout button will toggle between horizontal and vertical layout and most people that I've talked to have started out on this vertical one it's very confusing I don't like it I hate it but if you do choose to use this vertical layout for some ungodly reason you can go down here to where it gives the double cursor thing and then you can scroll up to bring up studio but i'm gonna get out of here to horizontal because i don't like it the next thing that is not very intuitive are these little buttons over here and over here i didn't even realize they did anything for a very long time if you click this little music icon it's gonna bring you to the create tab basically so instead of having to go to create over here you just have like a mini window of create on the side which i can see how that can be useful but depending Depending on how big your laptop screen is, you might want to have some of these closed. I usually have all of them closed unless I'm using them. And then you can click the icon again to hide it. Next up, we have this icon with the books, which is the library. You open that up and it shows your generations. Not only does this show the songs that you've generated, but it also shows clips that you've generated inside of Studio. And this icon to the right of the library is your workspace. And if you want to get rid of that, go to this icon on the right. I don't know why all of a sudden the icon changes, but it just does. It looks like little mixer knobs. You can click that. And then you have to click the library button to close it. It's weird. I know. Let me go over that again just so you saw. If you open this up by mistake, click the mixer knobs and then the library. And you also have this button to the top right which will show the clip properties and EQ and all of that stuff which only works if you have a clip. So let's just drag in a clip. We're just gonna grab something from our library. You can just click that and drag it anywhere into studio where there is a track. Snow, 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 man, snow. Don't ask. So now if you click at the top of this audio clip, you'll see this side pop up where it has clip and track. And on the clip section, you can choose to remix it. I don't know why they even have that because we're already in studio. I wouldn't even worry about that. And you can do the classic like and dislike and all that. You can mute it, et cetera, et cetera. I would never even use these. I don't know why you would. But this basically just gives you all the regular options that you have with a song inside of the create tab. You can also change the color of this audio Audio track by clicking this thing look it's pink pinky and for tempo you can choose on beat or original and basically all that means is that it's going to try to time stretch this to whatever BPM or tempo that you have the project set to so let's say you dragged in a sample at like 80 BPM but your project BPM here at the bottom is 150 BPM it would speed up your clip to be on beat at 150 BPM and just below that we have transpose and these work off of semitones so so let's say that this was a C note. If you go up one, it'll be C sharp and then D and then D sharp and then E. And if you go up 12, that's one octave. And speed is pretty self-explanatory. If you go one half, it basically does the time stretching thing again, but to be exactly one half of its original tempo. Just so you hear what that sounds like. Here's the original clip. Snow, 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 man. If we go half speed, it sounds like this. Snow, 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 man. It does absolutely nothing, apparently. And then just below that, you can control the clip volume. And you can also control the clip volume over here as well. If we scroll down, a little bit you have the option to extract stems this is just like extracting stems inside of the create tab you can choose all detected stems or vocals and instrumental and just so I can explain the stems better let's find like a full song I'm just gonna drag that in just like before and now go to extract stems we'll do all detected stems just so I can show you exactly what you can do with that all right and now our stems are extracted and it also has a version one and a version two but I usually never generate a second version because it does fine the first time for me you can either download these stems or you can insert them all into the project which will mute the full song however if there's only one stem that you want to edit you can just choose one of these and click this little arrow and it'll put it right there in the playlist 
If you scroll below that, it will show you the style prompt that you use. And this is really great for whenever you have uploaded audio, it'll have a description prompting out the audio that you uploaded, which is really great for trying to understand how Suno works. If we scroll back to the top on this right side panel and we go to track, that's going to give us some new options like this fancy EQ. But before we go there, you can delete the track from here or duplicate it, which once again, I don't know why that is here because you can do that over here as well, but whatever. And you can get it to stop following tempo, which will basically put it as original instead of on beat. So I don't know why that's here either. That's already kind of covered in clip, but whatever. So I'm not going to go into a full tutorial on EQ because it's a whole thing. But basically the way this works is from here to here, from left to right is low frequencies to high frequencies. Low frequencies are things like kick drums and bass instruments and towards the high end are things like syllabants like and hi-hats. With EQ, what you can do is carve around different sounds to make everything fit together better. For instance, like if you have too much low end on this side of your vocal, you can cut that out so that you're just letting the bass take up that region. Also, if you have some bass that's got too much high end, you can take it out on the high end. And you can see we have these little dots, which are called bands, bands to make a dance. And if you click on one of these bands, you have an option to change the filter type. So down here are the different filter types. The first one is called a high pass, which is a bit of a confusing name, but basically all it means is that it's letting all of the high frequencies pass through. So it's cutting out the low. So some people call a high pass filter a low cut filter. So high pass and low cut cut are the same exact thing. And to the right of high pass, we have a low shelf. And this is for making subtle changes in the low end. Like if you just wanted the bass to be a little bit louder, you just bump that up a little bit and then it'll make that louder. Or you can take it out some. So this is like if you don't want to cut something out completely, you just want to reduce the volume a bit. Then after low shelf, we have a peaking filter. And that just looks like this. This is for removing certain frequencies. For instance, sometimes in a vocal, the 500 to 700 range will just have some weird noises in it that don't sound good. And so you can just dip out those specific frequencies. And you can decide how surgical you wanna be by going to this button called the Q. All the way to the right is gonna make this skinny. All the way to the left is gonna make it fat. So if there's just like one area, like you hear some type of ringing, you can use that to take it out without affecting other frequencies. And next up we have a notch filter, which is basically the exact opposite of a peak. Instead of boosting or taking away certain regions, you can only take away with these. Honestly, I never really use these unless I'm doing some weird sound design stuff or like neuro bass or something. But besides that, I don't really see a point in you having to use that. Next up, we have the high shelf filter, which is basically a low shelf, but for the high end. One instance you might use this is if you want your vocals to sit above the mix a little bit, you might want to increase a little bit on the tippy toppy top end. Or if you just want to remove a little Little bit from an instrument that's making too much racket in the top end and you just want to bring it down a bit you can do that and last but not least we have the low pass filter which is the opposite of a high pass filter it's letting the low frequencies pass and it's cutting off the high end and if you don't want to mess with all this suno does have presets bass boost is basically doing a peaking around 100 200 hertz and then a low shelf for a vocal it might get rid of the low end dip out the mids what i say 500 to 700 400 right there and then boosting up in the highs and then if you want to disable it you can just toggle that off and now I'm going to hide this and let's look at some other fancy controls we've got this little section right here on the left is where all of your tracks are so like this audio file or clip is connected to this track and you have a few different options you can do if you click this speaker icon it mutes the track if you click this s it solos the track so that this is the only thing that you can hear and I'll actually bring in those stems so you can see what I mean if you hit solo on these effects only the effects will play this little knob right here will change the volume of your clip and this one will change the panning which just means on which headphone is coming from like the left or the right or center by default everything is in the center but if we go left with this it's only the left ear we go right only the right ear. And this is really good for like filling up the stereo field, like making stuff sound wide. So let's say you have two different guitar parts. You could do one 36% to the right 
and then have another one that's like 30% to the left. And that'll just make things sound wide and make you feel like you're in a space more. If you click these three dots, we have some extra options like add a take lane. So basically what this is going to do is just show you the different take lanes for whenever you create a generation. Because whenever you create something in studio, it's gonna do just like it does on the create tab and make two different versions. Then you can also hit the delete button to delete it. You can also duplicate, which will just make a duplicate of those drums. So now you have two of the same file. I use this a lot whenever I'm trying to create something new, but I don't want to lose the original that I had. And then we have rename. You can name it whatever the hell you want to. Click the add track button to add just like a completely blank track. But let's say that you wanted to record something. Well, buddy, you just would add a track. You would go to where it says no input and you would select a microphone. And let's say I select my Scarlet. And then this little circle on the left arms that track for recording, which means that you have to have that selected before you hit the record button at the bottom if you want to record. And the record button at the bottom just looks the exact same as this one. You can also add a track by hitting this little plus button on the left bottom and you can upload audio by hitting this little button right here. You click that, it'll open up your file explorer and bam. Next up, let's look at the bottom over here. What is all these buttons doing? So this is the BPM or the tempo of your track. If you leave it on follow track, then your BPM may change over time, which does happen with Suno Generations from time to time, which is why if you've ever had the experience of trying to download it, putting it in your DAW, it will just not stay with the fucking tempo. That is why. So usually when I'm prompting, I try to tell it a BPM because a lot of the time it'll stay more stable if I do that. And then if I bring it into studio, I hit manual BPM so that it stays consistent over time. You can either use these plus or a minus icons to change it one at a time, or you can highlight it and just put in your own BPM. To the right of that, we have this little button, which is a metronome, which is just a good way to keep time. And if you just want to go to the beginning of the section, you can hit this back button, take you all the way to the beginning of the song, or you can forward to the next section. And this little button is the play button. But I usually just hit spacebar because that's much easier. And then after that, you can choose to loop certain sections and then you can drag these pink markers around to decide how long you want the loop to be. I don't know why you would use this. I never use this, but uh, if you want to, you can. And then after that, we have this button, which is follow playhead. That's just gonna follow this thingy right here, the blue triangle, that's the playhead. You may have seen that in videos of like FL Studio or something where it's showing a project file. It looks nice, I'm not gonna lie, but I never really use that when I'm actually working inside of Studio. If you scroll over to the right here, you can zoom out or zoom in, which I usually do just by holding down control and moving the scroll wheel on your mouse. And if you just wanna go back to default, you can click this, which is reset zoom. Before we go on to actually replacing and creating and whatnot, so in the last couple things before we go on to actually making stuff is this window right here, which is where all of your projects are. You can click that you can either start a new project share a project with somebody check out different versions of your project which are saved automatically and if you open project you'll see they have made this really pretty now it's really easy to look at all of your projects and then this button on the top right is the export so if you want to export the full song you would click full song and what that is going to do is turn this whole thing into a WAV file that you can download on your computadora oh well it saves in your library then you can go to your library and download it and if you click on multi-track this is going to save all of these tracks individually as a zip folder on your computer and if you don't want to do the full thing you can select just a part of it that you want to to save, you can go to export and selected time range. So let's open up a new project so I can show you all the cool stuff you can do with this. I'm gonna open up my file explorer and get this uh, piano, drag it into the project. And what that is gonna do is just upload the file straight up there to the project. You can also click the top of this clip to move it around. Oh, and I should have also mentioned, if you go to the right or left of this, you can get rid of certain sections. This is basically like trim Trimming. Boom. You trim it, it's gone. It's there, it's gone. And you also have that option to fade in and out. So if I have this, 
but I want it to fade in. You just hover over it till you get that little double cursor thing and you drag it to the right. It will fade in the volume. And you can also right click one of your clips. You can download the wave. You can get MIDI for it if you want to try it in your own DAW with your own instruments. Uh, just so you know, the MIDI is not good. But I don't blame Suno for that. I've never come across something that does audio to MIDI that actually works properly. You can heal edits. So if you've made edits to it that you don't like or you've replaced it and it didn't sound good, it's basically like an undo button. And you can reload lyrics, which honestly I did not know was a thing. So I don't know what to do with that. Uh, maybe I'll do a video on that when I find out. Before we go into actually making something, you can also undo or redo. So you can hit Control Z to undo anything thing that you do or click that button now to start off a song you have to have some type of track or you have to record something in and then once you have that and you add a new track you now have the option to create or if you duplicate this track or have something else in there you can replace it or cover it so let's go over what both of those are I'm going to hide this so that we can open up this window so it's nice and big so I'm gonna highlight this piano basically what this cover thing does is the same thing that Suno does in the create tab with uploaded audio and doing covers like that but you can choose individual instruments so we've got drums bass guitar keyboard percussion strings synths effects brass woodwinds vocals backing vocals a full ass song or custom so let's say that we like this piano melody but we want to hear it as a synth you would just click synth and then type juno synth synth melody and that's pretty much it you don't have to go too crazy with the prompts and then you have your advanced options just like usual uh what i've noticed is it it working pretty good on the default setting so I'm just gonna keep it at default and then hit cover then if we minimize that you can see that it is generating the new audio file right now and I'm going to solo this to see how it did it does so much better now that they added this cover feature Jesus so now let's try out the create instead of cover. I'm just going to get rid of this piano so that we just have the synth and let's add a track and let's say that we want to get some drums going for this. So we can highlight that section. Maybe we take the style influence up to like 80. Maybe we go to exclude styles and we type in snare, hi-hat, cymbals so that it just gives a kick and maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Maybe we should take this audio influence down to 20. Doesn't look very promising. So let's try one more time using replace. Basically the difference between replace and cover is cover is going to try to stick to your melody. It's going to take your prompt and take inspiration from the actual clip that you have selected. Whenever you do replace, it's not going to take context from the clip that you have selected or the melody, but the surrounding context of the entire song. So let's do replace. I'm just going to say kick drum. It looks a little more promising. Let's check it out. Okay, so it's off beat as a motherfucker, but it finally did drums and it added some bass. So it's not perfect, but it can do a lot of cool stuff. And last but not least, if you ever get confused, you can go to this learn button and it will just confuse you more. I'm just playing. They do a decent job of it. Like for import audio, they've got a video showing you what to do for adding instruments and remix selection. That can be helpful if you get confused. And that's pretty much all you need to know to start making music with Suno Studio. So what are you doing still on YouTube? Go to Suno, make some stuff. And if there's anything else you you want to know about Suno AI let me know down in the comments or my arm is gonna transform into an 18 wheeler it's gonna drive to Tennessee pick up a hitchhiker become long-term friends with them until the end of time discover how to use nuclear physics to win the Olympics <coughs> Olympic, 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 Olympic.